We are honoured to be joined now by much celebrated African writer and human rights champion Ngugi Wathiongo. He is here for the Auckland Writers Festival to speak about his latest memoir, Wrestling with the Devil, which details his time as a political prisoner in a maximum security prison in the late 1970s. Thank you so much for joining us. Yes. Really oh, appreciate it. Uh, first up, you were a professor at the University of Kenya when you were abruptly sent to a high security prison for without trial for a yeah, year. Yeah, University of Nairobi. So, Kenya. so what actually yeah. happened? Uh, well, they came. Okay, uh, a little bit about the background. Mm. I had written a play and performed a play in the Kikuyu language, performed by a community outside Nairobi, and the play was stopped on November 1977, and on December 31st, the same year, I was uh, abducted from my home and found myself in a maximum security prison the following day, the new year of 1978. I was um, in a maximum security uh, prison, a prisoner without a name. Wow, so this yeah, is because number. you wrote a play? In the most important thing is the language issue. Yeah. Right. I wrote, okay, to get the context, English is the official and uh, most, and the language of power mm -hmm. uh, in Kenya is a kind of heritage, a, co a continuation of the colonial, uh, mm -hmm. because Kenya, was, or the colonial system, because Kenya was colonized by the British between yeah. 1995 to 1963, and English was the official language at the time, and the language of power. It continued being the language of, of power after uh, independence. African languages, uh, have been, were marginalized during the colonial era, mm. and they continue to be marginalized in a post-colonial era, okay? And one example of that marginalization was my arrest and detention in a maximum security prison uh, in Kenya, in a, the biggest prison, you know, in Kenya. Mm. Wow. Uh, so it wasn't so yeah. much the content of your play, it was the language that you... Both, no, both, I think both things, mm. both right. things, because I'd published other things in English. I used to write in English, for instance, and I, I'd have published, um, I think, The River Between, Weep Not Child, A Grain of Wheat, and Petals of Blood in, uh, in English. And most of these were really fairly critical of the post-colonial system, okay? But this guy, Kadeda, in Ikikoyo, my mother tongue, was my first work in Ikikoyo language. Yeah. And, and so I think the language factor was important mm. in my imprisonment. Yeah. And, and speaking of that imprisonment, what was it like for you in prison? Uh, dull. <laughs> Sameness of everything. But yeah. I did one thing which is very important for, for survival. I wrote a novel in prison on toilet paper. You wrote it paper. on toilet paper? Toilet paper, you know. How but did it's not, you... But it's not, but listen, it's not the kind of paper you see advertised on television. Not fancy toilet paper. It's like hard. I think Ooh. it was meant to kind of be a bit rough. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't meant to be a pleasant about. experience. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but it was a very good writing, you know, uh, right. uh, material, really. Yeah, it held the pen very, very well. Were you yeah. ever worried that the guards would take away your novel from you? Yes, yeah. There's, in fact, in my memoir, Wrestling the Devil, uh, there's a chapter called Sherlock Holmes and the case of that missing novel. And this is because towards the end of my imprisonment, when somehow or other the pounced uh, on me and they searched my cell and found these piles of to unused toilet paper as they thought and they seized the whole lot, you know. Uh, so I tell the story also in the memoir, Wrestling with the Devil. And, yeah. and with Wrestling with the Devil, when we are reading it, what are you hoping we are going to get out of it? Yeah, the idea of resistance, you know, the idea that uh, everybody we must be able to say no to repressive practices, you know, very, very important. But so for New Zealand, it's something, actually, there's a, you know, there's a connection between my imprisonment mm. and my experience of New Zealand. 
and that connection is uh, okay very strong connection but a very important one yeah okay when in prison I start thinking a lot about the language issues language matters and the unequal power relationship between colonizing or dominant languages and dominated or colonized languages mm. and as I think about not not simply in in the Kenyan context of the time, but also in the context of other places. And then in 1982, I was forced into exile in London. And Auckland University, the Department of English here, uh, invited me to give the, they call them the Rob Lectures, mm -hmm. okay? And Michael Neal and Sebastian Black were responsible for that invitation. So, what to my subject? The politics of language in African literature. These are the lectures which later became uh, uh, decolonizing the mind. And the most important thing for, thing for me in terms of memory was the fact that they were delivered also during the Maori language a week, okay? Yeah. But the lectures themselves were literally the notes that I had uh, thought about in committee maximum prison wow. in Kenya years before. Oh, I can oh. see that That's why there's this connection. Yeah, because, yeah. Uh, yeah right. Well, oh, I can talk to you for hours. Yeah, it's <laughs> been an absolute yeah. pleasure having you in the studio. Thank yeah, you so much. Yeah, thanks. Uncle Iwathiongo will be speaking at the 2018 Auckland Writers' Festival tomorrow. You can check out the Writers' Festival website for details. Yes, there's so much more to this man. If you get the chance, go and see him.